Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know people are still jumping in, but uh, you know, I like to be timely. So welcome to today's masterclass, everybody. I am excited to share this information with you. The information I'm sharing with you today is information that I have gathered through, through actually being in the field and selling for over 20 years. So it's not something I read in a book. It's something I've actually done. All right. So today I'm going to speak specifically on seven secrets to double your sales this summer, because a lot of people in the summertime, their sales go down for different reasons. And we're going to get into that. All right. And this is brought to you by CompassionateCloser.com. That is my site. Uh, that is where you can get a, a lot of uh, information, uh, ebooks, uh, videos, what have you. All right. So let's start. Let's get started. All right. So if you stay until the end, I have a free offer for you that's worth over five hundred dollars. So today you will learn. OK, so I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, selling this summer, but I'm going to talk about way more than that. You will learn how I went from struggling to make one sale to selling over twenty three million dollars worth of product and services. And uh, this is this is while I was working for someone. And then when I started my business, then I you know made a lot of money there as, as well. I'm going to talk about three myths about sales that every solopreneur must know. And then the number one secret that leads to high close rate and get your prospects to say yes. All right. Okay, so imagine this. How would you feel if you learned the leadership skills necessary to be in control of every sales call from now on? Imagine if you knew exactly what to say, regardless of the objections that your prospects throws at you. How would it feel if you had the confidence and the posture to consistently make predictable sales? Well, it's possible. Not only have I done it, but I've taught entrepreneurs like you how to sell their offers without sounding pushy, without sounding salesy. All right, so let me just give you my story real quick. I got into sales over 20 years ago. After college, I got a job with Xerox. Uh, Xerox at the time was a Fortune 100 company. It was like Apple or Google. And I was excited to work for this great company. And I thought I would be put in something like advertising, which is fun, right? But they put me in sales and I didn't want to be in sales. <laughs> I don't even like salespeople, right? I don't, I don't want anything to do with sales because I consider myself a nice guy. And I thought, you know, salespeople were, you know, pushy and arrogant and all of that. But I, I, I told my dad and he said that I should do it anyway. He said, when you learn sales, you can use those skills in anything you do in life. So I did it. So I joined and I started um, trying to sell for the first two months. So this is what happened. I sold zero copiers in the first two months. And, you know, at Xerox, they actually let you sell other uh, other products too, like like toner, like paper, things that are cheaper. I didn't even sell that. I couldn't sell toner. I couldn't sell paper. I couldn't sell anything. And I was on the verge of getting fired because I was so uncomfortable uh, trying to convince people to buy a copier, right? And anytime I was on a sales call, I felt that the prospect was controlling the call. So again, I called my dad, he was a realtor at the time. And I said, I think I'm gonna quit because I don't wanna get fired. And this is what he told me. He said, find somebody that sells the way you would feel comfortable selling. So I went up to a guy by the name of Brian. He was the top sales rep in the whole region. Real nice guy. And I asked him if I could shadow him and just follow him and find out how he does it, how he sells without being pushy. And he said, sure. So I started to follow him around. So I remember going to these different uh, uh, businesses, these business, different accounts, and I had my pen and my writing pad. There were no iPhones, there were no iPads. <laughs> Okay, so I just had my writing pad, right? And I want to write the um, whatever like uh, tricks or uh, gimmicks or anything that he does. And that's what I want to do. So I started following him around. And the first thing I noticed was he was getting to know people. He was making friends. And he wasn't even talking about copiers at first. 
And then, you know, later on, he would start talking about, you know, your business and say, you know, he would ask questions about your business and then, you know, the systems and everything. Then he would say, so what do you like about your current copier? And people would say what they like. And then he'll say, what do you, what, what don't you like? And then they would start telling him. And then he would get them to open up and talk about their problems. And then he would recommend a copier that meets their needs and solves their problems. And they would say, yeah, sure. And then now he's become their friend. Now he would say something like, you know what? I know you need paper and I don't want you to go back and forth to Home Depot so, uh, or to Staples. So why don't we just buy you six months worth of paper? And they would say, yes. And then he would say, well, you know what? You need toner and it would be, you know, it would be a, it would be a, a tragedy if you have to if you have to stop your operations to go get toner. So I'm just going to go ahead and order six months of toner. And they would say, sure. And I'm like, oh, my God. And and I had nothing written down because there were no gimmicks. Right. And I started to learn what he does. OK. And that was my aha moment. That's when I knew I can be successful at sales without being pushy or sleazy or shady. And then what happened was I created what I call now compassionate closer system. All right. And within 18 months, within 18 months, I was in the top 3% of all sales reps in the region. I was winning uh, awards, um, uh, trips. Okay. Um, and it happens pretty quickly because I learned this style of selling. And then I ended up uh, going uh, building two successful businesses, again, selling, all right? I joined the network marketing business. They said, hey, you need to recruit people. I became the number one recruiter in the whole company using my compassion uh, closer system. Then I wrote a book and I sold it and became a bestseller because of the skills I learned, right? Now, I was then able to help other entrepreneurs to do the same. All right, and I'm gonna show you what I did. So first of all, let me just tell you what it can do for you. When you have a skill to sell, there's no limit as to how much you can make, all right? So I, I uh, built a, a house, our dream house, on a golf course, Jack Nicholson golf course, right by the beach here in Virginia. There, there I am with my boys. And um, three days a week, sometimes four, I'm on the field, uh, teaching, you know, soccer to, to this, this is my son, to him and his team. And the reason I have all this time is because of the skill that I learned. And I'm going to talk more about that. And then we are able to travel the world because we love to travel, right? So here we are, here I am in South Africa, um, Canada, right there, uh, Niagara Falls, Canada. There we are in Germany. Here we are in uh, Cabo St. Lucas, Mexico. And I mean, we've traveled around the world, but, you know, I, I can't, put them all here, but these are just a few pictures of what we have been able to do. And then I started speaking because people would want me to come and talk about my system. So I had, I had all these speaking engagements and I ended up being on stage with, you know, a lot of successful entrepreneurs. All right. Now I will say this as a disclaimer, right? People that don't do the work or don't put in the time will never get the kind of results I got or, or my clients, all right? I did this by implementing my unique style of selling. All right, so let's talk about the difference between traditional closers and compassionate closers. Now, as you can see, traditional closer is old school, okay? This is how they teach you to sell people whether they wanna buy it or not, just get them to buy, right? It's old, it's archaic, it's slow and people hate it, all right? But then there's the compassionate uh, closer, which is much more fun. It's faster and everybody wins, all right? So I'm gonna talk about that. All right, so traditional, closing the sale at all costs, using high pressure tactics, being pushy and overbearing or tricking people to buy something that doesn't benefit them. That's the old school, okay? Now, this is what I do, helping prospects solve their problems, helping prospects achieve their goals, creating a win-win situation and having fun uh, uh, while, you could, while you do so. So I'm gonna go over a few myths first before we even get into how to make these sales. Myth number one, salespeople are born not made. That is a myth, okay? I grew up shy as a kid. I did not like to sell. I did not even like salespeople. 
but I learned the skills. Anybody can use this system to sell more offers. Myth number two, I have to be pushy, salesy, or overbearing to be successful in sales. That's absolutely not true, okay? The opposite is true. You have to listen more than you talk. You have to place your prospect's needs before yours. Myth number three, I don't need a sales coach because my offer sells itself. Well, that's a myth. Regardless of your industry, you must have a competitive advantage. Studies show that people that are mentored by coaches achieve their desired results four times faster. There's nothing that sells itself unless you're the only one in the entire industry that sells it, okay? But if you have competitors, it, can, you do, it does not sell itself. All right, so let's talk about the seven secrets to doubling your sales this summer, all right? Let's, let's get into it. All right, the number one secret to making sales this summer or anytime, I'm gonna talk about it a little later. It, it's so important, it has its own slide, okay? This will blow you away, number one secret. Now, number two is to change your sales psychology. What do I mean by that? So what I have speaking engagements and a lot of times I ask people in the audience to tell me what they think of salespeople. So when you think of salespeople, what word comes to mind? And I tell them they're not allowed to curse because those kind of words come up sometimes, right? And they say things like pushy and salesy and overbearing and you know slimy and like all these words. And many of them are, all, are entrepreneurs. And I'm thinking to myself, if an entrepreneur, a business owner, thinks that salespeople in general are slimy or are or, or, or pushy, then they won't sell uh, as much as they should because you cannot become what you despise, right? So if you think sales is a bad thing, then you won't make a lot of sales. So you that's why you have to change your psychology to realize that sales is a good thing if you have a great offer right? The, the, the whole economy, the whole economy grows every day because of salespeople. Why? Think about this. What, what builds the economy? Uh, building homes, right? Buying homes. Who's, who sells the homes? Realtors, right? Buying cars. Who sells the cars? Sales, salespeople, right? Even if you, even, even uh, these, uh, these airlines that buy the Boeing, Boeing planes, they have, someone sells it to them. Right. So so salespeople are essential in this economy. And the thing is, when you are when you are an entrepreneur, a business owner, you are the ultimate salesperson. Right. So I, I, I talk to a lot of business owners. I've been doing this for 15 years and people tell me all the time, like, Eric, you know, I'm a business owner, but I'm not really a sales guy. And I'm like, yes, you are. You are a salesperson if you're a business owner, right? People talk about the, the great um, uh, entrepreneurs of all time, like Bill Gates, right? Uh, uh, Steve Jobs, right? Or even Oprah Winfrey. Guess what? They were all salespeople, like excellent salespeople. They were excellent salespeople, right? So I want you to embrace it. Instead of saying, I'm not a salesperson, just say the way I sell is different from the way other people sell. You have to change your psychology. All right, number three, believe in yourself. And I talk about money mindset in my coaching. That's the first thing I talk about. And people say, well, Eric, why are we talking about money? Why don't we just talk about sales? Here's the deal. If you don't believe that you can make all that you want to make in sales, you won't make a lot of sales. I had a client years ago. She told me that nobody in her family ever made more than $50,000 a year. Her mom never made more than 50. Her dad never made more than 50. Her, her aunts, her uncles never made more than 50,000. And, and she had a business where she could make way more. But, but around October, when her income was at to like 40, she would literally uh, sabotage her own sales and stop talking to people, stop closing, because she didn't believe she could make over 50 thousand dollars so when i was able to change her money mindset and make her realize that there is nothing wrong with being rich nothing wrong with having a lot of money guess what happened her mindset uh, her mindset shifted and she started making a lot more sales the next year she made over a hundred thousand dollars which is double more than double what she was used to making right because we live in a society where it's not cool to be to, to be successful in any kind of sales People, 
people literally say, well, Eric, you know, I'm not greedy. Like I ask you, what, what do you want in life? What do you want to make? What do you want to accomplish? Well, you know, I'm not greedy. This is enough for me. It's not about being greedy. It's about setting your family up, right, to have everything they want in life. That's what it's about. My my 10 year old son, he's been to, I don't know, maybe 10 countries, my 10 year old son. Why? Because I made the money necessary for him to have these experiences, right? And I remember last Father's Day, he wrote a, he wrote a card for me. And in the card, there, were, there was no, nothing in the card that said, thank you for giving me money. Guess what he said? Thank you for taking me to Canada. Thank you for taking me to Mexico. Thank you for taking me to South Africa. Thank you for, he was talking about experiences, right? So, so, so forget about the, 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 what, what we've been taught in society. Don't talk about money. Money is not important. Or uh, um, uh, what, what do people say? Uh, people say um, money doesn't bring you happiness. Yes, it does. It brings you happiness. Because if you're able to sell your offer and make more than you need and you have money sitting in the bank and your relative needs to get an operation and healthcare, um, your, your, your health care does not provide your, your health, um, health insurance does not pay for it. Guess what? You can stroke a check and pay for it. You think they'll be happy? So I was I was um, I was on a on a field soccer field a couple months ago and my son, he um, he his team was able to go on to a tournament okay tournament is where you know it's after the season you have to pay extra for it so he told me that one of his friends who's a very good soccer player can't go for a tournament i said why not he said his mom doesn't have the money guess how much it was sixty dollars he's one of the best soccer players on the team and he couldn't go for sixty dollars so what i told him i said okay you know what go tell his mom I'll tell him that I'll pay for it. If it's okay with her, I'll pay for it. So she, he, she, she went, he went and told the mom, and guess what they said? His dad found out and said, no, he's not going to take any money from me, even though he can't pay for it. So if I paid for it, it would have brought happiness to his son. But because his dad does, did not make enough money and his mom did not make enough money, now the son is miserable. The son could go on to become a professional one day, but we'll never know, right? Because they that the money mindset, right? So I want you to change your money mindset. If you have anything in your mind telling you you're not you're not supposed to make more than a hundred thousand or more than two hundred thousand or whatever it is, it, just throw it away. Just take it, write it on a piece of paper, burn it, whatever it is, right? You are destined for greatness. You can make as much money as you want. All right. It's not about the cash. It's about what you can do with it and the people you can help. All right. So sell yourself on your offer. This is huge. There are a lot of people that go around selling things that they don't believe in, that they don't believe in. Right. You have to be sold out on what you sell. You, it has to be an irresistible offer. If you don't believe in it, 100 percent, don't sell it. You got to believe in it. Right. And when you believe in it, you can transfer that enthusiasm in your sales calls. Right. A lady called me a couple of years ago and said, Eric, you know, I'm in this company and I, you know, I know you can do well. I mean, you tear it up. Like you can make you can make multiple six figures in six months. And then I said, well, you know, what do you guys do? And I, she, she started to explain how, you know, you pay like two hundred dollars to join. And then after a month, you get paid four hundred dollars. So I said, OK, so what's the service? What's the product? He said that there is no product. You know, it's just money. I said, okay, so you just trade money for money? She said, yeah. I said, <laughs> I said I'm not going to do that kind of business. That's not even a real business. She said, but, but you'll be good at it. People are making money. I said, you don't understand. If, you don't, if I don't believe in what I'm doing, I won't make a cent, right? You have to believe in what you are doing, all right? So there were, I had a client once who was in an industry where they have um, contracts, and she sold herself on the belief that she can't sell her offer because people don't like signing contracts. And I told her, I said, look, that's in your brain. A lot of people sign contracts. I sign contracts all the time, right? But they only sign contracts if, it's, if, if what they're signing for is valuable, right? So I, I was able to convince her, right, that signing a contract, there's nothing wrong with it. And I obviously, I gave her a script and everything. And 
she she used to she used to try and sell them on a one month contract for a thousand dollars. I said to her, sell them on twelve months for twelve thousand. She said, but what if they don't buy? I said, what if they do? Right? I said, you can always downsell, but start with the highest. Guess what she did? Her next sales call within forty five minutes, she got a guy. She had a prospect sign a, sign a contract for twelve thousand dollars. She called me. She was in tears. She said, I can't believe I made twelve thousand dollars in a day. I said, guess what? You can do more than that, because if I even teach you how to do webinars, if I teach you how to how, how to talk to to many, you can make way more than twelve thousand in one day. And I taught her. Right. So so I just want you to know that. If you change your mindset and you believe in your offer, there's nothing that you can do. Number five, build rapport. Here's the deal. Anytime you meet with a prospect, never, never talk about business first, okay? Never talk about business first. Because if you do, that is a transactional meeting. And a transactional meeting is uncomfortable for the salesperson and the person that's being sold, if, if it's all transaction, I never talk about the product or the service when I meet with you. I'm going to talk about everything but the product or the service, right? If I meet with you one-to-one, -one, let's say we're at a Starbucks, right? I can, I can talk about your bag. I can talk about you know, your, your clothes. I can talk about your car. I can talk about your family. Whatever it is, we're going to chat for a while and get to know each other before we ever get into business. Even if I'm on Zoom, I'm going to talk about your background of your Zoom. Like, oh, you know what? What kind of flower is that? What kind of dog is that? Oh, you know, uh, my, my, my brother has one. Like, whatever it is, you can relate to everybody somehow, right? Never talk about business first. Always talk about something where that's relatable so you get to know them. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. Let them get to know you first, all right? Okay. Number six, this is huge, huge. If you do this, you will separate yourself from 80, at least 80% of all your competitors. Listen up, okay? Now, now I usually go really deep in my in my uh, coaching, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you enough, okay? Where you can use this. When you meet with a prospect, what you do not want to do is just give them your sales pitch, right? So you say, okay, I have this sales pitch. This is how we sell. And I just say, this is what we do, blah, 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 blah. blah. Never do that. Yeah, that is 10% of the sale, okay? So you never wanna do that. Here's what you wanna do. You wanna uncover their emotional highs and their emotional lows. What do I mean by that? People buy off emotion, not logic. Now, a lot of times people justify their purchase on logic, but really they bought off of the emotion. All right, I'll give an example. So before we built our house here, um, you know, I, I drove by the neighborhood. I love the neighborhood. Okay, again, it's on a, a Jack Nicholson golf course, right? Uh, 18 hole golf course. So when we got there and the guy was talking to me about the area, he started talking about golf. And he noticed I wasn't really interested in it as he was talking. So he said, do you golf? I said, no, I said, I mean, I, I, I did, I mean, I have, but I don't really like golf. So guess what he did? He switched the whole conversation. And then he said, you know, do you know that we're right beside the beach, Potomac? I said, yeah. And he could see that I got excited. Yeah, beach. Okay, you guys, you, you guys like the beach? And my sons were like, yeah. Then he started going in, leaning in to the beach talking about the beach, talking about how we can eat, you know, we can eat crabs on the weekend by the beach. And we started visualizing it, right? It got me on an emotional high, right? So emotional high is when you find out what your prospect needs, what their number one goal is, what their number one result is, what their number one transformation could be. You get them on emotional high by asking them those questions. Now, when you ask them the questions, then you go deeper and deeper and deeper. All right. Let me give you an example. All right. Emotional high. I'm, let's say I'm selling a um, uh, health and wellness product or I have a coaching program or something like that. And I'm talking to a, a, a young man and he's, um, he's maybe 40 pounds overweight. And I said, so, so, you know, how many pounds would you like to make, uh, lose? 
okay, um, ideally, next, you know, five months or whatever, he says 40 pounds. I said, I was like, okay. Now, now, why do you want to lose 40 pounds? Well, if I lose 40 pounds, I'll be able to, to play basketball with my sons. Okay, okay. What else? Well, if I lose 40 pounds, that will help me health-wise because, you know, my health is suffering. Okay, what else? Um, well, if I lose 40 pounds, I'll be able to fit into those, those jeans I used to wear that my wife used to always come in and say, I love those jeans on you. And then they, do you know, sometimes when I'm going into this, people start crying and it, they're crying for a good reason because they're thinking about where they want to be in life, right? That's an emotional high, right? So when you get them to that emotional high, then you ask them, so what is it? that's stopping you from getting there. And then they start telling you all the problems that they're having. And then you say, in the next 12 months, God forbid, you're not able to lose any, any pounds and you're right where you are now. How would you feel? Oh my God, I would feel like a loser. I would feel, I, first of all, I'll be unhealthy. I don't even know if I'll be alive. I won't be able to play with my sons. I won't, and they're gonna go on an emotional low. Everything they don't want is an emotional low. And then here's what you're going to do. Now you're gonna off now, now you're gonna present your offer, right? Now is when you present your offer. And when you present your offer, you will weave in their emotional highs and emotional lows. So I have an eight week program that that can help you. And this program would definitely help you lose the 40 pound that you want to lose, which will help you be able to spend more time playing uh, basketball with your sons. And that you'll notice that as you're doing that, they're nodding with you because they can see it. They can feel it. OK, and, and, and by doing this, obviously, it will help you health wise and probably will allow you to even live a longer life and they can see it. They believe it. And then you say the great thing about my program is it, it will it will avoid all those things you were talking about. You won't have to worry about not being able to play with soccer with your kids. You won't have to worry about 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 being sick or or not being able to to get up from bed. You won't have to worry. And you talk about the emotional lows. And then you say on a scale of one to ten, ten being you 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 want to achieve all those goals right now. One being it doesn't matter how long it takes. Where are you? Then they say they'll probably say a ten or a nine. Then you offer, you show them your offer, and then you say, my offer is only, and then you say the price, 5,000, 3,000, 2,000, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at that point because you've got them on such an emotional low and high, they will find the money to pay for it. And that's how you separate yourself from the man or the woman that just has a regular pitch. You see what I'm saying? The emotional high, the emotional low can make you a boatload of money, all right? All right, number seven, overcoming objection. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide for, for objection handling. All right, so how to handle objections? Now, let's, let me stick with that last, um, that last example. Let's say you, 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 you uh, went through all of that, you told them how much it is, and they said something like, oh, I don't know if I have the you know two thousand dollars. Then you're going to say, "Oh wow, I um, I'm sorry. I thought you said that you were you were trying to lose weight so you can you can play so, uh, um, basketball with your sons. And I thought you said you wanted to you wanted to lose weight, you know, so you can stay healthy. I I thought you said, and then you remind them about what they said." And if you don't, if you don't come up with the 2000 now and do it, and, you know, what will happen if, if 12 months from now you're in the same spot? Remember, you said that you'd be depressed and then they would say something like, oh, you're right. So um, do you have like a payment plan or something? Then they go from saying no 
to saying, yes, how can it make, how can we make it happen? And, and the only reason you got them to think that way is because you set it up with emotional low, emotional high, and you use your leadership. All right. All right. So remember objections are normal, right? Never defend your offer. Like never say something like someone says, well, it's too expensive. Well, no, it's not. I mean, never defend your offer never argue with a client okay um that it shows it shows fear and it just shows that you're desperate could never do that instead you go back to what they told you use their words not yours their words oh and by the way by the way when someone buys from you after you have uncovered the emotional low and emotional high they are way more likely to actually take action because they want it bad. They are way more likely to accomplish their goals and they are way more likely to refer you to other people because they know you care. You care because you ask them so many questions. You got to know all about their situation. They know you care. I used to get referrals from people that couldn't buy from me for some reason. They would send me all these referrals. And people will call me and say, Eric, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to meet with you. Uh, So-and-so told me all about you. And then they would buy whatever it is. And then they would find out that the person who referred them couldn't buy for some reason. And they were like, oh, she never bought from you? I said, no. Wow. The reason she referred me because she saw that I cared. Because I asked the right questions. She saw that I cared. All right. So um, that's what that's I'll go through one objection. I mean, I, I go through all of them in my coaching, but I'll go through this one. OK, now here's one. Your price is too high. OK, when someone says your price is too high, OK, here's what you do. You must show that the value of your offer is greater than the cost. Right. So here's what you say, because you want to you want to isolate the objection. Are you saying that my program isn't worth it or you can't afford it? Right. So now they're going to say, oh, no, 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 I'm not saying it doesn't. It's not worth it. I'm just saying I can't afford it. Now, then you say, if the money was not a problem, would you buy my offer today? And they, they're going to say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If the money was, if I had the money, sure. So here's what you just did. You isolated the objection, which means they can't come up with 10 other objections because you don't want to be there for three hours trying to overcome every objection, right? So you isolate the objection, right? All right, so it's all about the money, great. Now, you say, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said, then go over everything they said, okay? And then just don't say a word, just stop and let them, let them talk themselves into buying. You know, the, the easiest sale you'll ever make is when people talk themselves in, into buying. You know that, right? Um, if you're trying to be pushy, that is the opposite of, of, of being a good salesperson. When you're trying to be pushy, they, they, they don't, then, then there's, then there's, um, friction, right? Then you probably will never get the sale. But when you let them talk themselves into it, oh my God, they will borrow the money. They will find the money that like you, like the next day they'll have the money. You'll be surprised, right? Because they sold themselves right now. If you don't buy my offer, how are you going to overcome these challenges? Let them talk. Just let them talk. Let them sell themselves. All right. So that's the price objection. Obviously, there are a whole lot. I can't get into all of them now. I do go over them in, in my coaching. All right. Now, let's get to the number one secret. The number one secret to making more sales this summer or whenever. I call it the King's Code of Leadership. All right. This is the ability to lead your prospect by asking my 10 magic questions and helping them make a buying decision to solve their problem, all right? So it's you being a leader, not being pushy, not being slimy or sleazy, but being a leader. Because if you are not a leader, you'll, you'll let them off the hook and, and, and their problem will persist right the only way i can help you is if you buy if you buy my offer if you don't buy i can't help you so i didn't do i mean i was no good to you if i don't lead you to make a decision that will solve your problem or a problem of your family because your problem could be your, your spouse's problem and it could be your child's problem right so you can change lives if you learn 
leadership in sales. All right. Let me give you a few examples here in terms of leadership. All right. You uh, have an appointment to meet somebody. It's scheduled 30 minutes. Okay. And you have everything planned out. You're 30 minutes. You get there. And your prospect says, yeah, um, Tanya, um, so I'm, I'm running late. I have to go somewhere. I have to pick up my son. I have about 15 minutes. So tell me about your, your offer real quick. And then you just start talking. Well, well, you know, I can help you with this. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. I can help you with that. We have the people with this. I, and you just keep going and going and going and going. Guess what? You just lost the sale. 90% chance you lost the sale. You know why? No leadership. You do not control that call. That person controlled the whole call. I'll tell you one time, I was meeting with uh, um, this guy a few years ago that was, that was interested in learning more about my coaching. So we met and he told me, he said, um, he said, Eric, can you do me a favor? Can you just like summarize everything in about like 15 minutes? I said, uh, no, I can't. He said, he said, oh, he said, you, you can't like, I, I mean, just summarize, like, I like just, because I don't have my time. I said, I said, no, no, I can't. that's not how it works. I said, I said, first of all, I don't even know if you qualify for my program. Right. And that's first of all. And secondly, I don't know enough about you. I, I need to, I need to find out about you to see how I can help you. Because if I can't help you, then this is not a good fit anyway. And he said, oh, okay. Um, so what are we going to do? I said, well, we can, we can reschedule, but I'm not going to rush through it. So guess what he did? He said, let me make a phone call. He called the person who was supposed to meet and said, yeah, um, I, you know, give me 45 minutes because I have an important call. He, he, he ele elevated our meeting to important because I had, I, because I, I, I had posture and leadership, right? I didn't just go down that path of, I can help you with this. I can help you with that. Because you're done. You're done. <laughs> you are absolutely done when that happens. All right. And I teach people how to have that posture. All right. So sales call scenario two. Your prospect asks most of the questions and you feel like you are being interrogated. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Oh, my goodness. You get there and your prospect. So how much is it? So, so do you have like any testimonials? So how do I know it's going to work? Do you have any guarantees? And they're just asking all these questions, asking all these questions, and you're trying to answer the questions. Answer the questions. It's like it's like a um, a prosecutor, you know, uh, uh, and uh, uh, asking questions of a witness, or or, or interrogate or, or a um, uh, investigator interrogating a witness. That's another situation where you probably won't get the sale because now they put you in a position of weakness. People don't like to buy from people that are weak. Do you know that? They, they want to buy from someone that's confident, that believes in themselves. That, okay, it's, it's, it, it, here, here's another one. People will rather give you, will rather give you money if, you, if they know you have money than if you don't have money. Isn't that weird? I, I, um, I got a coaching, I, was, uh, I signed up for a coaching program to learn about online events and webinars. This guy charges $15,000, okay, for the, for the coaching. And I'm thinking, I don't know, is this worth it? So I'm doing the math, I'm like, well, I guess, you know, it depends. I mean, if I make way more than that, it's worth it, right? Now, this guy and his wife are millionaires. They help, they help people become millionaires. So I never, you know, it never dawned on me not to give him, not to pay the money. I'm like, sure, I'll give him 15,000 to help me. But if he was broke and his wife was broke and they met with me, I won't want to give them my money because I'm like, these guys need me more than I need them. You want a situation where your prospects need you more than you need them. If that happens, your sales will be much easier. All right. So make sure you don't. First of all, if this ever happens to you, here's what you do. You politely interrupt them. And you ask a question. OK. So you interrupt them and you ask a question, right? So, so, so Eric, um, uh, let me ask you a question. And then they ask my question. Well, actually, uh, Bob, um, before we before we go on, I need to know this. And then I start asking them questions. I turn the table. I turn the table. Whoever is asking the questions is leading the call. Whoever is asking the questions is leading leading the call. If you're not asking questions, if they're asking all the questions, you just lost control of the call. All right. All right. So let's keep moving. Sales call. Number three example, 
the call ends and your prospect says, thanks for the information. I'll get back with you. <laughs> How many times did that happen? Kiss of death. I'll get back with you. Here's the problem with that. When someone tells you they'll get back with you, it puts you in an awkward position where it's hard to follow up because he said he'll get back to you, with you. Because you're thinking, what if I follow up? And he says, well, I told you I'll get back with you. Then you feel, you feel pushy and, and slimy and all that. That's why you have to know how to end the call, right? There are certain ways that you actually end the call where you are in charge. You are the one that ends the call because you are in charge of the call. And nobody ever says, you know, thanks for the information, I'll get back to you. No, you're ending the call with what you say, not with what he or she says, all right? Okay, so let, let's keep moving. I, I don't want to spend too much time here. The number one expense of your business is lost sales. People, a lot of entrepreneurs spend so much time working on their SOPs. They spend so much time saying, oh, maybe I need to hire somebody. Oh, you know what? Maybe I need to tweak my product. Maybe I need to tweak this. Maybe I need to tweak that. Guess what? All you need to do is learn how to make, make more sales. That's all you need to do, right? I've, I, I've had clients where they have an offer that's $1,000. They meet with 10 people and sell one or sell two. And then they go through coaching. They learn how to close. They end up selling four. They're making three times the amount of money with the same product, the same SOP, the same everything, because they've learned how to sell the right way. All right. What did I just do? <laughs> you don't have to be smart to do this thing, guys. <laughs> All right. All right, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right. Bottom line, if you implement my magic questions and you lead the sales call, then your 90% of the sale is done, okay? 90% of the sale is done. Now, do you see, do you see how it's important to ask the right questions, to know what to ask, right? Now, why, do you see why you have to learn leadership skills? Do you see why you need a sales coach to equip you with the tools you need to become more confident in sales calls? Now, one thing I want you to understand too is this, the, the, the skill of learning how to close sales compassionately, I would say, is um, invaluable. Not only will you make a lot more money than you're making now, but you have a skill that you can, that you need, that you can use for the rest of your life, for the rest of your life. I don't care what business you get into, I don't care if it's real estate. I don't care if you if you have a, a hair salon. I don't care if you're in um, health and wellness. Once you have these skills, you can use it for the rest of your life. And you can even teach it. So you have a team, you can teach them the same system. All right, all right, let's keep moving. All right, now I know this can be overwhelming. The, the, uh, the, the information I've given you today can be overwhelming because you know, a lot of people say, well, it's, it's easy for you, Eric. You've been doing it for a while. I understand that. It can be overwhelming. So I'm going to help you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to offer you, for being on this call, a sales call audit. I'll, for 30 minutes, I'll give you a complimentary review of your sales process or your, uh, your sales closing. Okay, so you tell me, you show me your presentation and how you close, right? I'll give you at least one powerful change or adjustment to help you increase your sales. This is worth definitely $500. I used to charge $500. I still do actually in most cases just to meet with someone for 30 minutes. I'm going to give this to you for free. Okay, just go to meetwithericf.com, meetwithericf.com, schedule, schedule your appointment. But I have something even better. Okay, for those people that are really, really serious really, really serious. I am um, starting my coaching program this week on Tuesday, July 18th. Okay. And seats are limited. I'm only taking 12. I'm not one of those coaches that will take a whole bunch of people and just have a Zoom full of people. I don't believe in that. I take just a few people because I want to work with each person in whatever industry you're in. 
We're going to go over your questions. We're going to craft your questions. We're going to role play your questions. We're, so, so you're comfortable in every area of selling. Okay. That's what I do. I have a, a, several people are already in. I have a few more spots. If you're interested, book a call. We'll see if you qualify to be a part of this Compassionate Closer um, coaching program. Okay. All right. You have two options. One option is you can do it the hard way and try to just do this on your own, right? Okay, well, Eric, I got some good information. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Here's the problem with that. Now you're gonna go into what we call trial and error mode. Most business owners are in trial and error mode for 10, 15, 20 years, trial and error mode, where they just try things, oh, that didn't work. Try something, oh, that didn't work. Try something, oh, that didn't work and they're frustrated. A lot of them, they have to go back to the job or they, they, they can't even get out of the job because they're just trying to do it. It leads to a lot of wasted time and loss of sales and a lot of frustration. Option two, the easy way is to get my help. You can get my help, okay? I give you step-by-step -step guidance, no guessing, no stressing. I have a bunch of testimonials. So if you did meet with me, I can show you all a bunch of them, okay? Um, I will help you make more sales and make more money. No doubt. There, there's no doubt. Like I am a thousand percent sold out on what I offer because I know it works. It's worked for many people. It's worked for people that have never sold anything, like never sold anything in their life, but I teach them how to do it. And they start selling and selling more than so-called salespeople that, you know, just try and push things on people. Okay. All right. Who is this not for? Because it's not for everybody. I don't take everybody. I don't work with everybody. All right. People that are not look people that are looking for a magic bullet to close more deals, but are not willing to work. It's not for them. Okay. Because th th there's a work ethic necessary for success in life in general, right? You have to have a work ethic, right? I will give you homework. I will, you know, th th there'll be things that you have to do to be successful. And, you know, people say, well, Eric, why do you tell them that? Like, do, don't tell them that because I don't want you to get there and think you're just going to be watching videos because <laughs> that's not my, that's not what I do. I, t I get into trenches with you. All right. It's not for negative people that are always skeptical and do not keep an open mind for a better way. But like, well, well, Eric, you know, that's not how I was taught. I was taught to do this and do that. Okay. Then go do it. Don't, don't come to me if you don't want to learn. Don't come, don't, don't come to me if you don't want to learn, all right? Because I'm not, you know, if you, if you drag somebody in, you have to drag them around. And I don't drag people in. I don't drag people in, all right? People that are, it's, people that are not serious about making a significant income, I really don't like to work with them because that, that mindset will stop them from doing what I'm telling them to do, right? The mindset, they have the mindset that, oh, Aaron, you know, I can never make six figures because nobody in my family makes six figures. It's not going to work. It's not going to work because I cannot force them to get out of that negative money mindset. All right. But here's here's the person I'm looking for. Someone that's tired of losing sales. Someone that wants to learn the skills of leading a successful sales call without being pushy or salesy. Someone who is open to learning a proven system to close more deals and help more people. That's the person I'm looking for. So like I said, my, my, my coaching is not for everybody, but it could be for you if you qualify. All right, so just uh, to, to close, go to meetwithericf.com. If all you want is a sales call audit, I can do that for you. Book a call with me and I will give you tips on moving forward in your business. But if you want to take it to the next step and you actually want to be part of the chosen few to be in my coaching program that starts next week, then let me know um, and um, we'll see if you qualify, then I'll be glad to work with you. All right, so let me just look at the, uh, if there's any questions, please put it in the chat. Um, if there's any questions and I'll be glad to answer those questions right now before, we, before I get off the, the call. Any questions? Okay. All right, no questions. Okay, I think someone's talked about uh, Jerome. Yeah, send me send me a uh, send me a message. Yeah, send send me a message and uh, and we, we we can talk about that. 
All right, so let's see if there are no questions. I I could see that. Yeah, I could see actually on my calendar that some people are booking calls, so they want to talk to me one-to-one. Uh, -one. That's fine. You want to talk to me one-to-one, -one, book a call. Again, meet with ericf.com, meet with ericf.com, and I'll be glad to get you from where you are to where you want to be. All right. Appreciate you being on today. And I wish you wish you well. Great selling. Bye-bye.